Hello, welcome to the special CUBE Conversation. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. We are here at Sundance Film Festival, Sundance 2018, special coverage. All the top stories are obviously in the Intel Tech Lounge. All weeks have been our home base. We've been out in the streets getting the best stories, but one of the most biggest uh, compelling tech stories is the VR revolution is here and the impact to artists, the new creative. Uh, my next guest here is Michael Schmidt, who's the C Chief Commercial Officer of uh, Ziva. Welcome to this CUBE Conversation. Thanks, John. Thanks, pleasure to be here. You guys have a very impressive company. You're here at the Intel Tech Lounge. You're displaying Ziva. I saw a demo over there. You guys are bringing, I mean, really studio grade quality of animation and integrated into storytelling. Uh, and this is not new for you, but one of the themes is democratization. So you guys are a key tell sign, in my opinion, of where the developer, creative developer market's going. Talk about what you guys are doing and some of the big things you've done. I know you have some big films. Share a little bit about Ziva, then we can have a conversation. Sure, sure. Yeah, and we like to say, I mean, truly we believe in characters, and at the heart of our technology is character simulation technology. So here at Sundance, you know, in Intel, we've been working with Intel for a while. They gave us the opportunity to be here. Be here. You know, when you think about stories, stories kind of are driven by characters, and great characters make great, great stories. So in our world, great characters are characters that are simulated through physics and anatomical simulation to achieve levels of, of, of um, plausibility and reality that previously was maybe only accessible to the very top you know, budgeted productions or the very top VFX studios of the world. And what have you worked on? Just share some, some of the, um, the films have you worked on and some of the tech. Yeah, I'll give a, a background of the, where the, I guess the, the uh, previous kind of uh, uh, legacy of the technology come from comes from, but uh, and it's actually my, my partners who are here with me um, of a storied record. Uh, they actually co-authored co the software, you know, ten years ago or so that uh, that drove characters in titles like Avatar and Apes and Hobbit. Um, James and Simon, if I think they're on a uh, floating around back there, they've also uh, got a high tech at home for the engineering work. And the vision here is that. You know, they did that work and they were really motivated and enthused to do amazing work, amazing uh, results, provide amazing results. They want to enable that same and provide that same kind of functionality to small studios, big studios, game studios, independents, anyone who wants to tell a great story. And there's a huge tsunami. We've been talking at theCUBE for the folks watching. Know that I've been on this uh, uh, narrative around a renaissance in software development. Mm -hmm. but now we're seeing a renaissance in creative development. And we call that the new creative because an organic, trend is brewing pretty fast. Yeah. And it used to be not just indie filmmakers, we're talking about <laughs> kids, adults, creatives, who are doing filmmaking things in like virtual reality, and some of the successes that we're seeing, like Baobab Studios is one, they're having the hits around the characters. Yeah. So there's a thirst and a demand for technology for, for characters, but it's hard to build. Yeah. This is an opportunity for you guys. What's, what's your view on, on, on that trend? Are you guys going to be a supplier? Can I just use your technology to get characters? And where does this fit into the evolution of, say, VR? Sure, and I mean, I'll touch on that concept of the new creative, because those who want to, to build and create amazing characters to tell rich stories, tell immersive experiences, they don't want to be, you know, like anything else in our life these days, like anything else that Intel is powering in our life these days, automation of the simpler tasks should be a given. You don't want creatives to get hung up on, you know, trying to make your cheek look exactly the way it needs to look over 500 frames when you want them to be making, making, bringing the story to life. So our software basically automates a lot of the nuance of organic characters and properties and the things that make us realistic and I think emp empowers, enables those creatives to tell the stories. And how can they tap into Ziva? Because I believe that you guys are on the cusp of something really big, a big trend that no one's really talking about. And we come at it from a tech angle so we can see historically what happened with open source software. Yeah. I mean, 10% of the intellectual property and most big breakthroughs is the unique IP, 90% yeah. of it's reused software. Yeah. So you can almost see these dots connecting in this new creative world. You guys seem to be at the forefront of that. Is that part of how people can engage with you? Is that a role you guys see yourselves playing? And you know, how does someone get a hold of your technology? Sure. Do they buy it? Do, they, do you license it? How, do, how does it work? Great question. I mean, yeah, we focus on software to make characters, and that's what our customers license from us. We license to studios, we license to indies, we license to academics. Uh, we license to people who want to try it out for free. So if there's a plug opportunity, my, the URL for the website is zivadynamics.com. 
um, you'll learn a lot more about the company, about some of the work. That how, how expensive is it? I mean, just given, um, can you talk about the number? Is it expensive? Is it affordable? How does someone who's experimenting might have their art and their storytelling, vision coming to life, in sure. front of, and might not have a big budget? Yeah, so in it, the indie licenses uh, basically work out to about 50 bucks a month per, per user to, to, to leverage the software, which when you think about uh, previous, maybe less robust I implementations of this kind of thinking, um, we're limited and we're at the tail end of multi-million dollar investments by huge studios. So we think that's a pretty good value equation. Where are you guys located? Talk about your, uh, your company and the culture and, sure. and what drives you guys. Yeah, we're located in Vancouver. Um, you know, we're, we're in one of the epicenters of a lot of creative work and a lot of filmmaking. In fact, I mean, within a short radius of our, of our studio, the number of game and visual effects studios, it's, it's amazing. Um, so, you know, but our, our team's international. In fact, one of our team members is kind of mostly based in Wellington. Another one's actually working in Norway these days. And we've got somebody in, in Los Angeles. So we're kind of all over the place. And mm -hmm. our customer footprint, we've got users yeah. in every continent but Antarctica. I wish you could have come on the panel, but we were kind of sold out. We've got a small footprint here at the Intel Tech Lounge uh, in Sundance. And the real theme is a new creative. So I got to ask you, in your view, what does the new creative mean to you? The new creative is somebody who is is curious, and they're not scared. They're not they, they, they don't they're not concerned with necessarily what it is that they're going to be making or the media format they're going to be making. They're 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 curious about what what story they're going to be telling, and they're going to pursue anything. And they're not going to be shackled by artificial constraints. They're not going to be shackled by budgets that stop them, that make them take creative ideas off the table. They're going to pursue what they can do themselves. They're going to leverage technology in unique ways. And we're going to see some pretty amazing stuff happen. Yeah, yeah and as always, give them more time to work on their art, not worry about the scaffolding and the software to that's, do it. That's exactly it. What is, what's your take on Sundance this year? Obviously the theme, obviously VR here in the studio here, but AI has been an Intel theme as well. We see AI as a critical part of automation, the, ro the role of automation in software to assist and augment and, and give more opportunities for developers. Yeah, I, th I think it, uh, again, it's, it's people that have developed expertise and we shouldn't look at, at AI and automation as something to be concerned about. We, we need to look at it as a tool. And it's to say, well, how do I, how do, I do the last mile? How do I do the last 10% of what I do really good and have all the other stuff kind of taken care of for me? Michael, what's the hallway conversation? That's what you know, hallway here in Sunday. It's more of this sidewalk. Uh, when you're out at dinner and you're out, uh, when you're done here at Intel, when you're out in the streets, with your peers and colleagues yeah. and meeting new people. What's the conversation like this year at Sundance 2018? The conversation at Sundance, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's a conversation uh, that, that, to me, just goes beyond where Sundance has been before and that I think, and we heard it in some of the panels, but some of the, the emerging technology used to be like the additive thing, like let's go see what's next. Now it's just a part of the big story. And certainly the filmmaking has, has legacy, has more experience, has a lot of amazing stuff. There's so many amazing filmmakers and, and amazing content coming out of this place this year. Um, but it's just the variety, the diversity of everything that's happening is just blowing me away. Awesome. Michael Smith with uh, zivadynamics.com. Check out the website. I think this is a trend that you guys are on. I think the sooner we get to uh, ease of use of the creative developer, whether it's a filmmaker, VR, and or content and digital, they need characters. I want my avatars. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thanks for spending the time, appreciate it. Thanks, John. I'm John Furrier here for the Cube Conversation Sundance Film Festival 2018. We are covering it on the streets and also here. Ground zero for us is the Intel Tech Lounge. It's been buzzing all week with immersive media, not just VR, really showing creative developers a new way to reimagine storytelling. Thanks for watching.